I'm Heather. Welcome back to Bell's Library. And today we are going to get into the season of fall. I'm really excited to be doing this fall book tag. Uh, actually, Kelsey over at Bookishly Nerdy tagged me to be doing this one and it just sounds like fun. And it's fall and finally I'm so excited. Today is like the first day of fall and ah, it's just beautiful out. Well, it's not beautiful out. Are you kidding? Let's, let's not say that. I'm in California and it is hot. It is still 90 degree weather. Occasionally it decides to go into the 80s, um, but it's usually for like a day or two and then ah, 90s again. So love that for me. Anyways, that's okay because it's going to start cooling down very soon. I just know it. And maybe we'll actually get some rain possibly at some point. I don't know. But you know, I still love fall. We've got all the like cozy stuff happening. We've got the pumpkins and the fall leaves and the, the apple cider and I don't know, all the good stuff. Anyways, so we've got a fall book tag for you guys today. We, we do. No, I do. But before we get into all of that, get down below and click subscribe so that you can see more of my lovely face. And also my Goodreads and Instagram are down there so we can talk bookish on all the platforms. And let's go ahead and jump into the first question here. In fall, the air is crisp and clear. I wish. Name a book with a vivid setting. So for this one, I'm going to say Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I super want to read more books by her after I read this book. I got it as an ARC. I read it over the summer. It's actually, I think, would be really great in the fall time um, as well. But we're following this princess and she basically her stepmom ends up finding out that she has magic and magic in her kingdom is outlawed and it's illegal but her stepmom may have some dark magic of herself and she ends up cursing her and so nobody will remember her and she like sends her out into like the middle of nowhere and so she is trying to make her way back and like save her kingdom and then she has six brothers and all of her brothers get turned into cranes and the stepmom says if you utter a single word for every word that you talk one of your brothers is gonna die so she nobody can remember her face and she can't say anything without killing her brothers and it's just I remember reading this book and I literally my husband would try to talk to me and I'd be like I can't I can't say anything like like I just I thought I couldn't talk like I could just feel that like urge and frustration and just like scaredness that she had to talk but the way it was told was just in that kind of like you're in a fairy tale type writing which I really loved and I know it is based off of a fairy tale I just can't remember the exact name of what it is it's not like a super Disneyified one but yeah it's really a fun fantasy and I really enjoyed it and there's a little bit of a sprinkle of a romance in there which I enjoy but it doesn't overtake the whole story and we're following Shiori she's the princess and her journey and she really takes a great character arc and grows so much during the series and I just I enjoyed it so the next prompt is nature is beautiful but also it's dying <laughs> So name a book that is beautifully written, but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief or something like that. So for this one, I'm going to put in The Cost of Knowing here um, by Brittany Morris. This book, oh my gosh, Brittany Morris, I love her writing style. I love the way she writes books. She has a really great plot line that you're following that keeps you intrigued in the story, but she also embeds such great commentary like she talks about in this one loss and grief and dealing with that and friendships and family and just oh my gosh so many great things also tackles the idea of being a young black kid in America today and some of the struggles that can come with that and she just does it so wonderfully um in this one we're basically following these two brothers and one of the brothers he touches things and then he can see their future briefly um, so like he'll touch his car and he can see it down the line impounded and, um, totaled, or he touches his girlfriend, he sees them breaking up. So one day he touches this picture and he sees his brother's grave and he's just like, what is happening? Um, and so he's kind of freaking out, but 
It's really about him trying to reconnect with his brother and knowing that that time is coming soon and already having lost his parents and just so many other things. And that, oh my gosh, the end of this book is gut-wrenching. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's wonderful. Brittany Morris's books really need to get more praise and more people need to read them because they're wonderful. She is an auto buy author for me 100%. This next one I had a really hard time thinking of a book for so I kind of bent the rules a little but fall is back to school season so we're supposed to share a non-fiction book that taught me something new. I don't really read a lot of non-fiction books unless it's like for school. So if you want me to pull out some of my textbooks for nursing school, they've taught me a lot of things, but not exactly what I think is being thought of here. So I did put a fiction book, but it did teach me something. And I think it's also a really good spooky season read. So I kind of enjoyed that fact toyed in there. Fact toyed, yes. Um, so Thornhill by Pam Smee. This book is actually told really interestingly um basically we have two different timelines we're following and in one of the timelines we're following this girl's diary and how she's writing things in there and another timeline we're following this girl she's just doing sketches and so you're following this story through pictures and one of the girls went to this school or it's not a school it's like a foster youth home kind of thing uh, which with a bunch of girls and she's like getting really heavily picked on and bullied by the other kids. And so she's writing about that. And then the other timeline is this girl years later, like it's been like a few decades or something. She moves into this house that's right next to where Thornhill used to be. And it's like this um, dilapidated building, but she keeps seeing this girl in the window. And so, and she keeps like going over there and she's trying to talk to this girl and like connect with her. And so we're finding out a little bit more about what happened to Thornhill leading up to when it closed to this girl. And then also this new girl who is there and we're learning about her and her trying to connect with this other girl. And it is such a great book talking about bullying and how that affects people. And I just feel like it, it taught me a little bit about that and kind of had a good discussion piece there, but also has some haunted kind of spooky vibes. So in order to keep warm, it's good to spend time with those we love. So in this next book, we're gonna name a fictional family, household, friend group, that kind of thing that we'd like to be a part of. Well, hello, Mr. Tim Tim. He wants to say hi. So for this one, I actually went with Harley in the Sky by Akemi Don Bowman. I read this one as part of my circus books vlog that I put out and really enjoyed it. And there is a really fun friend group, but there's also some family aspects to this that also play into this story, which I really enjoyed. So we're following Harley and she really wants to be a trapeze artist. Her family actually, her parents own a circus in Las Vegas and she wants to, that's what she wants to do. And her parents are like, no, you need to go to school. You need to get an education first, this and that. And she's like, oh, that's not for me. And they're not really listening. So she ends up running away with the rival circus. So we kind of have this really fun friend group that she ends up making with her roommates that she's living in this trailer with there's two other girls with her and it's a traveling circus so there's like a whole bunch of like trailers basically and they all travel around so she is bunking with these two other girls and she makes really good friends with them and then there's another there's like a whole bunch of other people that help her while she's at the circus and kind of help her be there and get used to it and learn the ropes and everything and so I really enjoyed them and I thought it was really cute and sometimes when they're in different towns they go out to like restaurants and bars and just do other fun things. Uh, and then we also have her family though that she's kind of, she needs to make up with them and um, they need to make up with her. And there's like some family bonding ties that she's dealing with as well. And I really, I think that that was important too. And I, I think that it was well constructed the way that was all handled as well. But I definitely, that friend group at the circus, Makes me want to run away to the circus, for sure. This next one, I forgot to like, put a beautiful fall stack together. So, but 
I guess I should tell you what it is. The colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. Let me go stack some books together for you guys. I'll be right back. Here we go. There's a cute little fall stack for you guys. Ta-da. Fall is the perfect time of year for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book where somebody is telling a story. The first book that popped into my mind on this one was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I really need to reread this one. It broke my heart when I read it. It was so beautiful and wonderful and I just adored it. So if you haven't heard about what this is about, it is a very popular book I feel like on booktube. But we are following Evelyn Hugo as she is telling her story to a reporter and she tells it through her seven husbands like that's each period of her life is through each of these husbands and you're trying to you know find out more about her and her storyline and who the real love of her life was out of these seven husbands and it's just you get so connected to her and then there's just like twists at the end that you're just like I wasn't expecting that and you're just like, you're just so invested in her life that it hits you and you're just like, no, what? Anyways, I just, I adored this book. It's one of my all time favorites. And yeah, so this is going to go in there because she is telling a story. The nights are getting darker. So we're going to share a creepy dark read. And for this one, I am going with Horse Store by Grady Hendrix. And this one is a kind of haunted ikea story basically so i love the setup of this he's got like these creepy like pictures going on here and on the back it's like gross looking and you're just like how'd you turn into that but it's set up like an ikea store and you've got um orsk is what it's called so you got a map of how to get around the store and um he just he lays it out really adorably cute each of the chapters is titled after one of their furniture items and then he's got like his name badge for his little author about but we're basically following this manager at the store and he recruits a couple of the other people that work there and they're gonna stay the night in the store because every morning when they come in something weird has happened in the store like um the sofa got ruined or i don't know there's always just some kind of vandalism or something going on so they're gonna stay the night and try and figure out what is happening and who's doing it and then during the night like things go very weird and wrong and um very haunted ish so i'm not gonna say more than that because i don't want to give anything away but um yeah it's it's kind of creepy and but it's also fun because there's like some other humor in here but it's also kind of gross like I definitely remember some scenes where I was like that, that's kind of gross so Grady Hendrix kind of has that he doesn't overdo it I feel like but he has a little bit of it the next one is that the days are getting colder so let's name a short heartwarming story that could warm somebody up and for this one I just recently read the first two books in the Tea Dragon Society graphic novels and I'm hoping to get to that third one really soon because, oh my gosh, that is exactly what I was thinking. I was like, they're a short graphic novel, but they're so heartwarming. Like, if you want something that's just going to, like, make you smile, read these little graphic novels about these little cute tea dragons. And it's just adorable. Uh, basically, you're following this girl and she finds out about these cute little tea dragons. And they're, like, little dragons and they're each, like, it gives you kind of their unique personalities and how they like to be treated and it's adorable. But they have like little tea leaves on their horns or something and then you can make tea from that. But they are very particular about their care and so she's learning about how to care for them and it's just it's just so cute. So cute. So fall returns every year. Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon. So for this one I was thinking like not like old as in I've read it in the last couple years but like let's go way back like an old favorite right so for this I pulled out 
I just recently picked up a bunch of Nancy Drew books and I feel like they're perfect for fall because mysteries are just great for this time of year and I really want to read some Nancy Drew books again and just remember what they were like because I loved reading them when I was a kid and so I've got the clue on the, of the leaning chimney, the ghost of Blackwood Hall, mystery of the moss covered mansion, the haunted showboat. I feel like I remember this one a little bit. The hidden staircase, I feel like is a very popular one. This is number two in the series. And then the clue of the dancing puppet. So I've got a few and I think it would be really fun to read some of these as well for this time of year. I think they'd be really cute. Number 10 is fall is the perfect time of year for cozy reading. Yes, yes, yes it is. So share some of your favorite cozy reading accessories. Okay, so I am all about like just like the cozy life when it comes to reading in the fall. I actually like to put like some of these little ambiances on. Um, this one's kind of brighter. So if it's nighttime, I'd probably put something on that's maybe got some rain going on or something. But this is my favorite blanket right here. I love snuggling up in this blanket. It's just soft and cozy and I adore it. Um, I also really love like warm, long, cozy socks. I've got like a whole drawer of them over here. Love those. I've got some toe socks and stuff in there as well. So all about that. Um, I have a cozy sock robe. Usually some kind of hot drink. Most of the time it's coffee, but it's later at night. Maybe like some hot cocoa. I'm not a huge tea drinker too often, but occasionally I'll do tea. Um, oh, and snuggly animals, of course. So you just saw my dog, Timmy. I also have three cats. So somebody snuggling with me. That's definitely happening, whether it's my choice or not. <laughs> the cats like to come and curl up on my chest. Timmy likes to like snuggle next to my side. So, you know, you can get a little snuggly. Sometimes my daughter likes to try and snuggle, but that's not always very conducive to reading because she's very wiggly. And last but not least, spread the autumn love and tag some people. So for this one, I'm going to be tagging Rye over at Rye's Reading Corner and Caitlin E at The Lit Review. If you guys have time and feel up to it, I know you guys really enjoy fall as well. And I would love to see your renditions of this. Otherwise, if you haven't done this and you want to, I would love to see it. So please do consider yourself tagged. And if you guys made it this far and there's like a magnifying glass, like a little mystery magnifying glass or something, emoji wise, then throw that down below. I think there is. And I would love to chit chat with you guys if you want to answer some of these questions or whatnot. But I will talk to you guys super soon. And yay, it's fall. Bye, guys. Bye.